Now let's go back and let me just make this into a better algorithm. Make this into an in-place algorithm, okay? Okay, now for an in-place quicksort algorithm, <coughs> first you have to choose a pivot. Right, as usual, we'll have to choose a pivot, and I'm going to choose the pivot as 5. Right? This is the most important crucial thing in QuickSort. You choose the pivot, and in this case, uh, in, our, in our algorithm, we are going to choose the pivot as always the first element. Okay, so 5 is chosen as the pivot. Now, I'm going to keep two point, two like indices. Uh, first index, let me call it i, which is going to point to this, uh, the, the first location, and another pointer called j. Okay. So i and j. So I mean, the basic idea we, we have in our mind is the following, right? Everything. Uh, <coughs> so you have to split the array into two parts. This is the main idea, right? I mean, in QuickSort, and the, into two parts. The first part contains everything less than or equal to five, which is less than or equal to the pivot, and the right part contains everything greater than, strictly greater than the pivot. This is going to be our idea, and then we recursively uh, apply QuickSort on. So this is our idea and I want to implement this using an in-place al algorithm without using an extra array. So we'll have to do some swaps to get this, uh, to get this uh, decomposition or, uh, or this, uh, uh, I mean this property we are looking for, we want to get that. We are going to do that using these two indices i and j, right. And now what I'm going to do is the following. <coughs> this i keeps on proceeding left until it sees a point where you see an element which is greater than pivot okay right it's strictly greater than pivot right now uh, let's do that okay so we start from here so i'm going to copy this uh, here so it becomes like this okay so it's uh, so i is starting from there right there there right it comes here it hits 10 and it stops because 10 is greater than pivot right 10 is greater than 5 so therefore it stops there okay now we have our other pointer here it's going to start from here and it's going to stop when it sees something less than or equal to the pivot okay so here this pointer stops when it hits something greater than pivot and this so stops greater than pivot this stops less than less than or equal to pivot. Whenever it sees something less than or equal to pivot, it stops. This stops when it hits something greater than pivot. Now, so it's already stopped because it's at five, which is less than or equal to pivot and it's done, stopped there. Once it sees that, what is it it's going to do? We're going to, once both are stopped, this pointer i is also stopped, so both i and j have stopped stuck there, both can uh, proceed because of these two reasons, we're going to swap both of them, both these numbers. So I swap 10 and 5, 5 comes here, 10 goes there. Huh. Now what happens? Now, okay, both are free, both I and J are free, now they can just keep on doing what they were supposed to do. So I can start going again here, it goes, because now it's at a less than or equal to pivot, so you can just go, it go forward and it stops here, right? because uh, 9 is greater than i. Okay, it stops there. Good. <coughs> now, what is it it's going to do? Now, once it's once i gets stuck, you move to j, and j starts moving that way, right? And it's going to get, it's, it's going to stop when it hits something less than or equal to pivot. Okay, so it goes here, it, it can come here because it's 7, and it can go here 6, it stops here. Right? because the one is less than or equal to uh, pivot right once both are stuck you swap again so this becomes one and this becomes nine so you have swapped both huh. now what happened both can start moving again I start moving here and I get stuck here okay I is stuck J can move that side and J gets stuck 
okay now both are stuck but i and j have kind of uh, i has crossed j so so crossing i and j have crossed each other once i and j have crossed each other what is it this is done you can't proceed further because both are uh, i mean so uh, you will say it's done our algorithm is over so our, the first pass over of our algorithm is over therefore now when and we are saying okay our pa the first pass is over and now the, what is the takeaway once we have finished that so you you can look at here right this is kind of the cut where they both have crossed this is the place where i and j have crossed and you observe the following fact everything on the left of this array is less than everything on the right of this array this is what you get in the first pass of a jigsaw this is slightly different from what i explained earlier from what i explained earlier i said this part the middle point where will be the i'll, I'll put the pivot element there right and i used that to put everything on the left and everything on the right okay this is slightly different i am not saying i i am not putting the pivot element there all i am claiming now is uh, so this is l and this is r the subarrays all elements in l are less than or equal to all elements in r uh, not less than or equal to it's strictly less than all elements in r right this is the idea of qxor now i am going to recursively sort this and i am going to recursively sort this and i know that uh, that will work and you you do you uh, do you see that i i uh, we got this property uh, we got this without using an extra array right all i did is we used some swaps and used this two uh, indices l and r and we got this let's try to write this quick sort algorithm now okay so i'm going to okay so since it's in place algorithm i am not going to pass an extra array but i'm going to use two indices okay the beginning of the array um, which i am going to put it as s which uh, start of the array and in let's say e which is the end of the array right or uh, we can call this n okay n is basically the the length of the array from start okay initially this will be uh, uh, set to zero and n will be n the number of elements in the array <coughs> once we have this i am going to do the following uh, if you going to look at the first pass and the first pass i am going to choose the pivot what which is the pivot okay pivot is always oh so first let me write the base case and then uh, get Uh, get it out of the way what is the base case the, the base case is when n is equal to 1 okay right so if n is equal to 1 or n is equal to 0 you just return without doing anything right zero is basically this uh, i mean it's an empty array you will get okay now i'm going to take the pivot now i have to implement this to i and j so i'm going to uh, uh, let me declare those two variables so i is set to 0 and j is set to n minus so this is in the beginning and j is at the end right and how long should i do this i'm going to do this thing while right so while i is less than or equal to j so we are saying it crossed right we could have stopped it here itself and not allow it to cross but it's fine while i is less than or equal to j we are going to do this thing right okay so we do this thing while as long as i is on this side and j is on this side i am going to uh, uh, do my continue while but as soon as it crosses that is i greater than j it 
uh, happens, we are going to come out of get out of this while loop. Right. So while i is less than or equal to j, uh, what is it? <coughs> we just proceed further, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have two while loops inside it. Uh, okay. Let me just write that and explain. And right. Okay, so let's let's see what is happening. So while i is less than or equal to j, we do the following. Okay, while uh, as long as i is and j are like this, I'm going to go i is. We are going to increment i as long as uh, the, the, uh, the 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 number which i points to is less than or equal to pivot. I'm going to go further, right? This is what, and it stops. This while loop stops when that value is greater than pivot. When the value gets greater than pivot, we stop. We come out of this while loop. And then we start doing this, right? And then this stops when that value is less than or equal to pivot. So this while loop gets executed and, and it's, it's going like this and it stops when that value is going to be less than or equal to pivot. And then you come out of this. Once you come out, you're going to swap these two points, right? Here of i and here of j, you're going to swap those two points. And that's it. So this is our algorithm, but there's a small, just a small mistake here which we need to take into uh, consideration. So what happens here is that, um, right, so what is it we need to do? We have to see when i is less than or equal to j, right? We need to exit this while loop, that's clear. But what happens when I reach here in the last moment? Okay, at the last point when I reach there, i and j have shifted here, right? So this is my j. So i and j are like this. So that's the situation here. And then I do a swap. So this is in the last point. At the last point, I do the swap and then it creates uh, it's a problem. So I have to just keep an if condition here, which says that if uh, i is greater, right? So if i is less than j, do the swap, okay? So I do this uh, and if, if condition, it makes, this will make it correct. So what have I done? I have now uh, so implemented this this functionality of um, <coughs> the first pass of the quick sort of finding the pivot and placing the uh, splitting the array into two parts uh, correctly. We have done that. We have finished this first pass of this quick sort algorithm. And the next thing I'm going to do is we we'll, we need, we need to recursively sort these two arrays, right? And how do I do that? I'm going to call the same function again. I'm going to recursively call this function and where I'm going to use, um, so it's, it starts with AR here and that's the array. But what is a start? Uh, start is going to be again S. Yes. Ha, ah, okay. So here I, I made one mistake because this should not be zero. It should be the start. Yes. Right? Okay. So because our array should start from S. Yes. So I'm going to pass the same start because I'm going to first sort the left side and where should its endpoint be? Its endpoint is how many elements are there? It should be i. Okay, the value of i will be uh, the number of elements which are there. Okay, and 
so the number of elements in s is uh, sorry the number of elements in uh, in the left side of the array is going to be i and so the, we we have to now sort from s to i on the other hand what about the right side so the right side is going to be again ar and it's going to start from ith location it's going to start from the ith location right and <clears throat> how much distance that is going to be it needs to have n minus i right uh, is it n minus i uh, yeah it has to be n minus i that, uh, that many elements are there right okay uh, so this is quicksort so we are going to recursively do this thing and that's it this is our quicksort algorithm it's in place and uh, it runs in order n square in the worst case and order n log n in, a, in an average situation here is uh, an extra thing which uh, I would like to say. See, the main idea about QuickSort is choosing the pivot correctly, right? If I choose the pivot which is in the middle of the array, we are done. Now, is there some way I can find out the median element? So here is, the, this is a question which we talked about. Finding the middle element. So the middle element is basically what is called as median. This is uh, what is called as median. Okay, can uh, is there an algorithm to find the median element? Uh, yeah, but I want it fast. I want to find. Uh, I, I want an algorithm which can find the median algorithm very fast. Yes, there is an order of an algorithm to find the median element. Now, what happens if I find the median element? If I find the median element. I'm, I'm going to take that as the pivot and then I know that everything on the left, right? So 50% of the elements is going to come on the left and 50% on the right. And then I just build a tree and I'm going to get a balanced binary tree and which is going to give me an order and log and algorithm, right? And But I should not waste too much time on finding the median element. If I find waste n square time on finding the median element, I'm done. I'm already taking n square time. Uh, I had luxury to use only n n time because my height is log n, so I uh, I can then take n log n time uh, for the total sorting algorithm. So I had luxury to use order n time to do the median uh, find the median element, and actually there is an algorithm to find do that. It's called uh, you you can just uh, so it, it's 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 a little complicated on how to get this median element in order n time. Uh, but it, it, it exists. The only uh, problem is that it's these constants in this are uh, much higher and and it, it's complicated right first of all it's complicated to uh, this is a it, it's a complicated algorithm to get this and its constants are high so you wouldn't want to use this median uh, uh, finding algorithm uh, as the pivot here um, okay for um, so to avoid the worst case but there are uh, a better strategy would be to randomly pick any any number as a pivot okay randomly choose any number as a pivot and that's going to work with very high probability you're going to find um, uh, almost a, an element which is almost middle with a very high probability or uh, in the sense that if if my strategy is choose a random pivot i'm the i am almost likely to get a balanced uh, ba balanced uh, binary tree okay and the, the a skewed tree is going to happen with a very very low probability okay and especially when if you if, if n is very big this is going to be it's, it's not going to happen at all or the probability of that occurrence is very low so you so that's much better it's 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 much simpler and faster you just randomly choose a pivot you just in 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 the n elements just randomly pick one and use that as pivot and do do this algorithm that works fine for most input okay and uh, okay, and this is QuickSort, and this comes to our end, uh, our end of our sorting algorithms. Thank you very much.